Hey everybody, Stu, AG6AG, and today we're going to continue our talk about uh, radio emissions as well as evaluating our overall RF exposure for safety. Um, this is a second video on this subject. The first video we took a look at a mobile rig and how to calculate our uh, safe minimum distances and how to calculate what uh, our effective power is and all that good stuff. Um, we're not going to cover all those formulas. We're going to talk more about the measurements and things like that that you need to look at when looking at your base station. And we're going to kind of center on dipoles and HF equipment for this particular video. RF exposure is a misunderstood subject for a lot of people. You have a lot of people that aren't in amateur radio or know anything about radio communications that points at a big antenna and says, oh my God, that's going to give me cancer. Well, we know that pretty much isn't true. Um, and then yet they hold a cell phone to their ear all day long and talk on that phone, uh, basically sending all that RF into their brain. Now, realistically, there are safety levels. The FCC has set standards. And as we talked about in the first video, our responsibility as amateur radio operators is to calculate out what the exposure levels are for the people around our equipment. And we are trusted by the FCC to do that. Now, we're very fortunate because we can use mathematical formulas to estimate what those values are. And the Mathematical formulas are set up in such a way that they are, how do I say this? They are extremely critical. So what they basically do is they provide the worst case scenario atmosphere. Um, so without any further ado, let's kind of get into this because this is a this is a reasonably complicated subject. Now, I want to remind you before I go into this particular slide. If you haven't watched the first video, please watch it. I cover a lot of formulas. I cover a lot of theory. Um, you know, uh, I'm not going to cover it as well in this video because this is more about, you know, a hands-on. I have a shack at home. I need to get this done. How do I do it? All right. So you've been warned. Go back and look at the first one. If you get lost in this one, just watch the first one and the second one will make lots of sense. All right. So what I'm looking at here is... Um, how theoretically uh, ARL and the FCC says that we're supposed to measure a vertical antenna distance from our point of interest. And in this case, our point of interest is a little stick figure. And we're looking at a couple uh, vertical antennas. These happen to be two meter antennas. And it's pointing to the center of the antenna, which would be the center of what we call the emitter. Okay. Well, this is fine and dandy if I have a vertical. Okay. That makes total sense. But what if I have a dipole? Uh, the dipole is going to be a little bit different because the exposure any place across that dipole is going to basically be the same if you're facing any side of the broad dipole. Now off the ends it may be less, but remember, we're here to calculate the, uh, um, oh, how do I say it? We're here to calculate the absolute worst case scenario. So I was looking for references telling me on a dipole by the FCC or someone that I was supposed to measure from the center of the dipole or the center of the emitter, and that would be, you know, what everything's based on. I couldn't find that statement anywhere. Um, what I did find in the ARL um, RF emissions manual uh, or RF evaluation manual was a little bitty sentence about evaluating a dipole and they gave an example of the dipole terminating or being tied off uh, at the end of the dipole five feet away from the property line okay and they said in the statement well so at this five feet you don't have enough distance in order for uncontrolled safety so 
that implied to me that I have to take a look at these math formulas measuring from the absolute closest point on that dipole antenna uh, to whoever my point of interest is. Okay, so we're going to show some examples of that. We're going to talk about that. We're going to run some math. Um, Something interesting is, you know, we used to have blanket exemptions, but these are now the current exemptions. In other words, if you fit inside these rules in this table, um, you don't have to go through the actual, you know, uh, uh, power density formulas and everything else to do a uh, mathematical estimated evaluation of your station, okay? There's only one problem with this is... To do it, um, you need to calculate out everything you need for the formulas anyway. So, in my opinion, even if it would be found exempt under this, the act of running the formulas, uh, you know, I'm going to be running a formula on this. Why don't I just calculate the distance? So, again, if you want to take a look at this, um, I encourage you to read through uh, the manual. This is actually in part of the FCC filing, 126-1 or whatever it is. Take a look at it. Uh, if this is the direction you want to go, great, go for it. There's lots of videos, too, that talk about this particular method of doing it. Uh, I think that using uh, the formulas provided in uh, the uh, Bulletin 65 from the FCC, uh, a little more accurate. And, uh, you know, if it doesn't pass here, I got to run those formulas anyway. So why not just run the formulas anyway? With that, let's take a look at my antenna. So this is the top of my house, okay? And that is my dipole antenna there. You can see I've got 10, 20, 40, you can't see them all. Uh, you can see that it's a fan dipole. It's also uh, what we call a trap dipole for 80. And here in California, we don't have a lot of additional space. So we, we work in a lot tighter areas. Um, that being said, uh, the, uh, the main thing I think to remember in all this is that we have a lot of flexibility in how close or how far we can be away from an antenna based even on the restrictive numbers. So let's pull back a little bit to get a general idea. There's the entire antenna in its entirety and you basically see my property lines. Um, what you'll see is uh, up on the top of the main pole there, I've got a um, tri-band VHF uh, UHF antenna. I've got another off to the left of that. I have another uh, tri-band VHF UHF antenna mounted to a chimney. Uh, on the right, you'll see a 25-foot HF antenna mounted to the other chimney over on the right. So, hey, just to explain this, that's a receive-only antenna. Thank goodness I don't have to evaluate it, right? So, that's just a receive antenna. I don't need to worry about it. But what I do need to worry about is how high the, my uh, dipole is, how high all this stuff is that I need to evaluate. So I kind of did some measurements and some other stuff and did some Google Earth and this and that. And these are the actual numbers that I came up with. My dipole at center is tepped. Tip, uh, just about 11 meters, a little more than that, but I'm, I'm downplaying the distance a little bit. Um, and of course, if I measure half the distance above that, that's the center of my VHF, UHF antenna. Uh, 10 meters over for the base height on the uh, um, chimney with uh, 1.5 meters to bring me up to about halfway up. Uh, I'm, we're only going to take a look at uh, one calculation, just so you don't need to look at all the calculations that we do here. So, um, you notice down at the end, I've got two measurements on each side at six meters. Uh, that's really uh, more like seven meters, but that's kind of where the dipole is connected to. And then I had to figure out, okay, so in red, how close are my points of interest? humans. So the seven meter point of interest here, right, that is basically to the closest point in my house on the uh, 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 on the two meter, 
Okay, same thing here, seven meters over on this one as well. Uh, I'm about seven meters on this uh, VHF over here. So uh, I'm good. Now, interestingly enough, on the dipole, I'm five meters from this is where my shack is. This is where my head is if I'm standing in my shack. Okay, so this would be considered, uh, you know, the closest or wait, is it? Well, let's look a little deeper. See over here, this is my neighbor's house. And you can see right here that this is the end of the uh, uh, basic antenna up here. And then it angles down like this to about this point because I couldn't get it all the way across in my backyard. So I had to make a 90 degree turn there which drops the height of the end of the antenna slightly. Um, and what that gives me is this measurement here of four meters from the top of uh, a normal sized person's head directly underneath this. And of course I can sweep it out to here and use those same numbers as examples over in my neighbor's house, right? So. If I'm looking at the closest distance for both controlled and uncontrolled to my HF antenna, well, there you go. One other thing I wanted to bring up, though. <clears throat> now, this is a fan dipole, so it has 10 meters, 20 meters, all that. And that 10 meters or 20 meters... Uh, is definitely not down there at the four foot level. It's more like at the, you know, six or five, or excuse me, four meter level. It's actually more at the five or six meter level for the control and much smaller if I'm basing that on the end of those antennas, as close as those particular elements are. Um, but that's a lot of complicated math and I don't need to take it down the road quite that far. I, again, I want to look at that worst case scenario and I'm going to manage all my calculations on my HF dipole on four meters, okay? So let's take a look at, uh, you know, something that's kind of interesting here. Uh, here are the exposure limits, basically. Uh, so to calculate exposure limits out, I would basically, for my controlled environment, let's say I was taking 20 meters, right? I would take, under power density, I would take 900 and I'd divide that by 14.350 squared. And that would give me the minimum or the maximum power density that my minimum distance is allowed to have, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and calculate out 100 watts PEP or peak envelope power uh, on a dipole at four meters because that's both my controlled and my uncontrolled, right? I could have a family member standing out underneath that point of the antenna or I could have a gardener standing underneath that point in the antenna. And the one thing that really we uh, only know for sure is that our neighbor is farther away than that four meters. So if everything's okay within that four meter calculation, I'm good. So here's where we get started. I'm going to start calculating out 100 watts. Let me get into the calculator. And I'm going to calculate out my dB gain for... my dipole and that is going to calculate out as 10 to the power of 2.2 dB divided by 10 which gives me 166 watts right so 166 watts now we're going to also do a addition for a ground reflection all right so a ground reflection all that really is, is a, um, if you have an antenna that's close to the ground or close to a metal roof or something along that lines, you may have strange uh, reflections that go bouncing all over the place, uh, increasing 
your actual power density number at a certain distance. So what they did is they came up with a, um, oh, let's just say a factor uh, that we can factor our power with, which basically means that we need to multiply our uh, ERP with, by uh, 1.6 squared. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to I'm going to clear this out. I'm just going to do the 166, and I want to multiply that by 1.6 squared. Now, don't uh, freak out over this number. It's a big number. It's uh, 425 watts, right? Um, but I think you'll be pleasantly surprised when we calculate the numbers out. Let's see. So the formula we're going to use here is going to be our power density. So we need to take our ERP times our uh, ground reflection, which the total of that is 425. But we need to put this in in uh, milliwatts, right? Everything is based on milliwatts and centimeters. So with that, we're talking 425,000. 425,000 milliwatts. Now I'm going to divide that by the rest of the formula, which is 4 pi times. Now I've got to take my distance in centimeters, which is 4 meters, which is 400 centimeters, right? And I need to square that. And boom, there is my power density with uh, full ground reflection calculations at 0 0.211. Uh, if I take a look at my controlled and my uncontrolled, I am under both those numbers. So guess what? I just passed. Okay. Now I would do that for each frequency. Okay, each power rating, all that stuff. And I can show you a quick example of that. Uh, give me just a second here to find that. This is a actual report that I did for my particular shack for that dipole. Okay, now uh, I took a lot of things into consideration here. I went way down the rabbit hole as far as that goes from the standpoint of calculating all this stuff out. But all the information about the shack is up here. My amplifier, my tuner, my coax, my antenna, the radio, the date I did it, of course me, um, the peak envelope power that I run for all of these different bands. Okay, my coax length, my coax, coax loss factor, my actual coax loss based on distance, um, and, of course, my antenna gain. And by then, calculating all this in, I calculated out my ERP. Now, I also factored in duty cycle here. Uh, this is single sideband, and it's not very heavily processed single sideband. So I estimated a 40% uh, duty factor on here. So after that calculation, it brought the numbers down to this. And then, of course, I calculated in my ground reflection factor, which brought my numbers to here. Okay. Now, my control distance and my old con uh, uncontrolled dis uh, distance I'm stating is four meters. Here are the calculations on all the different powers. Right, because 10 and 12, I only run uh, 100 watts uh, P, uh, PEP, and then uh, on 60, I only run 100 watts PEP. But you can see I've got the minimums here that I calculated out, and you see as we go higher in frequency, that number gets higher and higher. My uncontrolled on the other side of the coin, right, starts out here very low, but you can see that. I'm well under limits on all of these factors. Uh, you know, 15's a little close, but you know what? I'm still under it, so I'm good with that. Anyway, 
my results from my test show me as being fully compliant for both uh, controlled and uncontrolled. And you notice that I did it for every band. You notice that I am really doing it per antenna, okay, antenna radio combination. And I've got different reports for like VHF and UHF and for the mobile and everything else all individually set up. And that's really all there is to it. Uh, I'll show you one more trick before we bail out of here. And that is figuring out based on your power and uh, uh, your uh, 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 band, what those numbers are, uh, figuring out exactly what you're looking at for um, minimum distance somebody has to be away from it. Because this is really good if you're setting up portable. So uh, let's go ahead and get started here and calculate out what our minimum, uh, or excuse me, maximum exposure is for the uncontrolled environment. And that's going to be 180 divided by 14350, highest frequency in the 20 meter band, um, to the power of 2, or squared. And that gives us the 0 0.874, and we have it referenced right here. And now what we want to do is we want to calculate out, okay, we're going to run 100 watts on a dipole. So what is our gain going to be? And we calculate that out again as 100 times 10 to the power of 2.2, which is our dipole's gain, divided by 10. And that's going to give us 166, right? We knew that. And what the heck? You want to calculate in ground reflection? We can do that. Why not? So let's go ahead and we'll take the 166. And we'll, again, we'll multiply that by, uh, whoop, there we go. Multiply that by 1.6 squared gives us, again, our 425 watts. All right. So at 425 watts, let's do this minimum power rating. So I'm just going to put down here, let's just add 425 watts. What the heck? Just so I have a reference there. And we'll go back over here. And we need to get the square root of our power in milliwatts, so that's 425,000, divided by our max power density, which in this case for uncontrolled, it's 0 0.874. And we need to divide that by 0.5. And that gives us 196 centimeters, 199 centimeters. Let's call it 200 centimeters, okay? 200 centimeters, what is that? Well, folks, that's two meters, okay? Now, what does that mean? That means that as long as the closest part of that person's body is at least two meters away from any place on that antenna, you're good. What's two meters in uh, feet? Well, there's a tough one. <laughs> Not really. Two meters is two times 1.28. <laughs> Six and a half feet? Seven feet? I think I can handle that. I think I can make that happen. Anyway, I wanted to share that with you. Uh, remember, even when you're setting up a portable station, it's your responsibility to do this before you transmit. Okay? You need to have these numbers at least written down and be able to, you know, show them if the FCC comes by and says, we've received complaints. I doubt that's ever going to happen. But you know what? 
they require us to keep that on file, so let's just do it. I mean, you know, yeah, we're probably not going to win if we try to fight it. I don't know. Maybe we will. But with that, that's all I got. Um, I'm going to do a third video, but it's going to be completely based on your questions. If I don't get any questions, I'm not doing a third video on this subject. If I get some questions, I'm going to work through those questions with you and uh, see if we can get those resolved. Anyway, with that, 73, and we'll catch you on the air.